What is up guys, Taiki here, and in this video, I wanna go over the FARMS acronym, a mental model to help you become a more profitable farmer. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section below. So, you know, this, this acronym is meant to help you build a foundation, right, to become a better farmer with a more sustainable strategy, uh, because anyone can make, you know, 10x gains overnight, if you're lucky, if you're early and whatnot, but, you know, when it comes to farming, or at least my method is sustainable, gains, right? Like I don't really try to go for these home runs. I just go for the, you know, very like calculated, like high EV bets that just like make money over time. And that way I just grow my portfolio, my net worth over time sustainably. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it, uh, not financial advice. So the first F in farms, the acronym is the fundamentals. It seems like when you're in crypto, the fundamentals don't matter, right? It's all about fundamentals. But you know, as a farmer, I do have to worry about the fundamentals. And it, the easiest way to ask yourself, does this project have any fundamentals? Is that, you know, like, you know, does it have any fundamentals that will make it stand the test of time? 95% of the new projects that come in crypto have zero fundamentals. They might have pumpamentals, right? Where they can just like, you know, this like bull post on Twitter, you know, get people to buy and whatnot. But you know, at the end of the day, all farms or ma majority of the farms are zero sum. And you know, some, like, some coins go to the devs. And at the end of the day, like if you're not early in these farms, you're not gonna make money and you're gonna just be the profit, right? Because like, if you're losing money, then that means someone else is making money. If you're making money, then that means that money is coming from someone else, right, indirectly. So as long as you understand that, right, it'll help you evaluate these farms from the get-go. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with going into farms with zero fundamentals. If you look back to my channel back in April and May, uh, one of the reasons my channel blew up is because I was farming these things with zero fundamentals, but I knew how to play the game. I knew that they had no fundamentals, so I was just like dumping the token, like rotating it into Matic, and Matic was like going like up every single day and whatnot. So it, it's not like I'm, I'm not trying to bash, you know, these like short term farms, right? If you can play these like own forks, like whatever farms and like you're early and all that stuff, then yeah, like, of course you should do it, right? I mean, that's the name of the game, but just understand like what game you're playing. If you're, if, if the project doesn't have fundamentals, maybe you want to farm to accumulate that token. But if the project has zero fundamentals, maybe you should just dump the token, treat it as income. So one example that I want to go over is GameSwap, right? So this was a farm on Polygon. This was back in May 14th. And, you know, it was one of the farm, it was, it was one of the things that I farmed at, at the time. Obviously, this thing has zero fundamentals, but at least I knew that and I was dumping the token every single day. And it, this kind of goes into my second uh, point, uh, the A in farms, which is analyzing tokenomics. Because to tokenomics is everything in crypto. Price is the output of supply and demand. People ask me, oh, like, why is this token going up? Well, it's because there are more buyers than sellers. There doesn't really have to be a reason, right? And if the token has no value accrual, people will dump the token with force, right? In the short term, I can't predict intraday, like whatever price start, like price movements, but I can, if, if I analyze the tokenomics, I can say that, okay, like there's no value accrual, the emissions are higher than the buy pressure, the token is gonna just trend down over time. And it's pretty reasonable to assume that for the majority of these farms, right? It's called farms for a reason, right? Because like you, you deploy capital, you earn these for free and you just dump it. So. Let's analyze GameSwap uh, tokenomics, for example, right? TVL is zero dollars, right? Uh, who who would have thought? Who would have thought? So if you go to the tokenomics page, right, like at, at the top of these pages, they're always gonna like say bullish things, like oh, like it has a very low emission. You know, we're gonna be burning things. There's gonna be buybacks, right? Yeah, you're gonna make money, right? And distribution, 100% rewards go to farmers, right? It's like very, 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 very good stuff, right? Like it's 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 of course it's gonna go up, right? Stocks, and then, but you have to understand that you know farms are zero sum, right? Like. If you're making money, someone else is losing money. And all of these projects, some of the tokens, they go to the devs. Some projects, right, it's a fair launch, they don't take any of the tokens, and those to those projects might do well. But let's say 95% of these farms, like let's say like at least 1% of the token supply goes to the devs, right? So inherently the market participants in the free market are at a disadvantage because you know the, like the devs are developing uh, off of this thing in the in, in the first place. And you know, there's always these bull posts on Twitter about like announcements like you know, we just bought back 100,000 tokens, right? Like we bought back and burned, right? And everyone's like, hallelujah, like, you know, let's, let's go to the moon. But if you think about it, like if, if a dev buys back 100,000 tokens every single day, but the emissions are a million tokens a day, then it doesn't really matter what the buybacks are. It's just all like, like framing, right? It's, it's, it's all about framing, like, like, like how you think about the price of the token. And at the end of the day, like these devs know that it's most of these, most of these farms are a cash grab, right? I'm not, I don't wanna say all devs, right? Because there are a bunch of developers working on really, really quality projects. And those are the farms that I typically enter. But you know, you have to understand the name, you have to understand the game you're playing. Because if you don't understand the game, 
then you know like you're gonna get wrecked right like we ain't talking about practice this is it's all about the game so and the, and the last thing I want to go over is that, you know, you can love the application, but you don't have to hold a token. For example, I love Aave, right? I use Aave. It ha I, most of my funds are tied up in Aave, right, for the past, like, seven months. But I don't own the token because the token has no value accrual, right? They're not the same thing. Like, for example, if you like a company, like, maybe it makes sense to buy the stock because you believe that it's going to grow in the future. But when it comes to these DeFi protocols, you, you can think that the protocol will, like, lock up high, more TVL, but it doesn't necessarily, like, translate to higher token prices. For example, Sushi Swap. Uh, I, I don't want to bash on these projects. I'll, I'll bring up two projects because I, 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 I like these protocols, right? I'm bringing up these examples because I like these protocols. However, I, I will just not hold the token because I am not bullish the token, right? In terms of value or accrual. This is the price of Sushi. Of course, you know, it, it went up tremendously uh, in early 2021, but it's, it just doesn't do anything, right? You can argue that this. Uh, you, you can argue Sushi Swap has strong fundamentals, but the tokenomics just does not make sense. They have to emit tokens every single day. There's so much selling pressure every single day in the Sushi token, and there's just like not enough buy pressure to sustain the price. Second is Mirror, right? This is on Terra, and I love Mirror, right? It's it's a, it's an amazing protocol. It's synthetic assets. It makes sense, right? Like why do U.S. stocks and like you know the S&P, like you know people all over the world should have access to uh, these stocks, at least in my opinion. So, you know, it makes sense. I love this protocol. However, whenever I was farming this, I was just like farming and dumping it because there's, it's, it's just a pure governance token. There's no revenue share. There's like no value accrual. So, you know, it's, it just makes sense as a farmer to just use this as revenue and just, you know, just treat it as income. And then uh, that goes over to my next uh, letter, which is R, uh, which stands for risk. Risk management is everything in crypto. And it also is a thing for farming as well. And as a poker, I, I, I played poker professionally last year. So, you know, like my brain is wired to think of everything in terms of EV, right? Expected value. And the markets, everything that you do is about taking calculated risks, right? And I, I don't, like, I don't, yeah, I'll talk, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on this later. But, you know, hypothetically, if a play, if a, if a hypothetical play has an 80% chance it goes to zero, but a 20% chance to 10x, it is inherently mathematically plus EV because 80% of the time you lose a dollar, but 20% of the time you gain $10. So on average, when you make this play, you're making $1.2. Yeah, so it's plus EV. But yeah, 80% of the time it goes to zero, but who cares? It's a plus EV play. And as long as you're making plus EV plays over a long enough period of time, you're just gonna make money. It's, it's just a mathematical like solution, right? That's how you play poker. You don't, like, I don't try to make reads and whatnot. I just make the most mathematical sound decision and I make money, right? That's how I made money. Uh, that, that's how I made a living in, in poker. And whether a play is good or not is only obvious in hindsight. And there's no way to know in crypto whether, you know, it's an 80% chance to go to zero, 10, like 20% chance to go to 10x. That was just a simple mental model, simple example. But, you know, that's kind of how I think about it, right? And as long as you're thinking about that in, in a more rational way, I, I, I agree that it'll, it'll give you a better understanding of, okay, like, how do I manage risk? How do I do bet sizing, etc. And I argue, I mean, this is a controversial thought, so like not financial advice, of course, but I argue that if some of your plays are not going to zero, you're not taking on enough risk, right? And like a bunch of play, a, a bunch of my plays go to zero, right? And I'm totally okay with that because it's a calculated risk. And all the plays that go to zero, like I risk at most 1% of the portfolio. And I don't really care if it goes to zero because, you know, when I do take like calculated risks and some of my plays do work out, the winners makes up for the losers. So, you know, this is... This is a mathematical way to think about, okay, like, like if you think the risk reward is like in your favor, like how often does the play have to work in order for you to make money? For example, you know, if the risk reward is one, then you, your play has to work at least like 50.1% of the time for it to be profitable, etc. And obviously, you know, this, obviously like with the higher risk you take, there's more volatility. So there's standard deviation. So, you know, if, if there's more risk, well, yeah, like maybe the expected value here is here, but the standard deviation is so high, so it's really, really volatile. So the way I think about it is like, you know, for something with lower risk, uh, with like, you know, like calculated returns, I bet bigger, right? Because it's it's lower risk. But with something like this, I bet smaller because, yeah, my, my risk of ruin is like, it, it could be zero, but, you know, the upside is high. And if you bet small and the position works, well, it's going to become a larger part of the portfolio. So like, it doesn't really matter. Like you don't have to YOLO net worth, higher high risk plays in order to make millions or whatever. Um, like maybe if you're lucky, but you know, I'm not here to get lucky. I'm just here to sustainably grow my, grow my net worth over time. So there's that. And like I mentioned, like if you're early on something, you don't have to bet big, right? What you can do is like, what I usually do is like, I bet like one to 2% of the portfolio into something that I think could work and I will monitor that position. And, uh, when I see the devs ship, 
like deliver and the, the metrics are growing, then I'll bet bigger, right? And I'll, I'll go over an example of DeFi kingdoms at the very, very end. But this was a case of like, you know, me getting small and then building my position over time. And I mean, it, crypto is so early that like, like, you don't have to like YOLO network. Yeah, like I mentioned, like you don't you don't have to bet big early because you can always add on later, right? There's nothing wrong with adding on later, right? That's it's a psycho, it's, it's a psychological thing, and yeah, like I mentioned, I'm okay with some of some of my plays going to zero because I mean it's all calculated risks, right? Like sure, like when one percent of the portfolio goes to zero, I'm not happy about it, but hey, like if I think it's plus EV, then yeah, screw it. Like and one winner makes up for dozens of losers. And also, bet sizing should be inversely correlated with the risk you're taking. If something is higher risk, well, you don't have to bet big, right? You can just bet small and then add on later. Also, if something is lower risk, what has like a more, I guess, it's like decent returns, you can bet big, right? For example, Aave, bet big. Uh, speculative plays, bet small. You can add on later. The third, sorry, the fourth letter in forms is marry, right? And this, and the, I, I mean to say like marry never the farm, right? I, I know a lot of people like they just love farms and they just like marry the farm token, but I always say never marry the farm token, right? You, you just never want to marry the farm token uh, because it just help, it, it just like makes you act in irrational ways. So psychologically, when you participate in something, right? Whether you for start farming or like whether you buy that token, you're psychologically become attached to that coin. Right? Always understand that other people are farming the token that you're buying. And this doesn't apply to most coins, right? Like, like you know, but I'm just saying in general, just like always have the motto of never marry the farm token because that's how you lose money in crypto. And the good way to, uh, I, I, I guess a good question that you should ask yourself is that if I liquidated my portfolio today, would I buy back the same percent allocation that I hold today? Right? So for example, like a couple couple weeks ago, I had, I had an altcoin that like went to like 30% of my portfolio. It was like, I was euphoric and I was like, oh my God, like this thing is going to keep pumping or something. Right. And I was like, not act, acting rationally. I was like, I was in peak euphoria. But then if I took the step back and asked myself, if I sold everything, would I buy back 30% of my portfolio in that altcoin? And the question was hell no. Right. So that gave me uh, an, an understanding that, okay, like maybe I should, I need to de-risk and increase my Bitcoin, Ether, stablecoin stack so I can, you know, like manage my downside and whatnot. And I feel like this is a question you should ask yourself every single day, because if not, then you're just going to be acting irrationally. The last letter uh, in forms is simplification. Okay, simplification. Um, I think this is important in crypto because there's every, every day there's going to be opportunity overload. Crypto is 24-7, has endless opportunities, and it's normal to feel FOMO, right? Like you could be, you know, feeling comfy in your farms, and then you go on Twitter, and then a, a bunch of these like Twitter influencers and whatnot are just like pumping like random coins. Like, oh my God, this, this is the next 10x, right? It's just like, oh my God, like you need to enter this. Like, oh, like I'm so early. Like we are so early, right? And I feel like I, I argue that a part of being a good farmer, right, and being with, with a sustainable strategy is to be okay missing out on something, right? Like, I, I don't have to be in something new every single day. I can just simplify my strategy and be like, okay, I believe in these, let's say, core projects, uh, like, let's say, five projects, and I'm just happy being in here. And sure, maybe I'll look for new opportunities and I'll, you know, dabble there, but I don't need to enter something new every single day. Like, that's how you feel FOMO. That's typically how you lose money because all farms are zero sum or most farms are zero sum. And keep in mind, like when you're like leaving, exiting like these new farms, you're also paying like slippage, like transaction fees, right? Because with these new farms, like it's so illiquid that you you might be like paying like 1% slippage and think of that as like a tax, right? Like you're just like paying that to like the liquidity providers and whatnot. And you know, this is how I think about things every single day. It's like, yeah, like I, I mean, with with my channel and whatnot, like I, I get showed new things every day. It's like, oh my God, check out my check out this 35th own fork uh, in the month of November. It's like, okay, like, I, I, don't, I don't care, right? I'm okay with the fact that I am farming five projects on three ecosystems with conviction and missing out on random farms on other ecosystems. And maybe, you know, like if, if you have a dopamine addiction, you, you, you might not feel the same way. And that's totally fine, right? You have, you have to figure out the right balance for you because we all have like different risk tolerances. And like, just because I'm farming something doesn't mean that you should farm something. And just because, I mean, like you could be farming something and you're like trying to convince me and it might be a really good farm, but sometimes I'm okay with missing out because I just want to simplify my life. I, I'm busy, right? I make these videos, it takes a long time. I, I, I manage other things and like, I don't have to, I don't, I don't, I don't want to spread myself too thin because that's how I just like overcloud cloud my judgment and it's called choice overload. And you know, this is a marketing term. I studied marketing in college and there's this thing called paradox of choice where there's, if there's like, if you're faced with like too many choices, if it's, it's called choice overload, uh, 
you're, you're going to be leaving unhappy, right? It's like, for example, if I gave you three forms, like in a, in a video, and I was like, here, here are three forms, they're all good, right? And you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to choose that one because I like that form, right? And it's, you know, it's, you're very, very happy because, you know, really good forms. But for example, if I give you like 50 forms, right? I make a 50 minute video going over 50 forms, like <laughs> per minute, right? It's like, oh, like, oh, like what, what, and you're going to be like, okay, well, like, sure, like these are good forms. Like, what do I enter? Like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go on curve and farm, right? <laughs> so paradox of choice, too much choice is stressful. And when you're faced with too much choice, you're going to often default to like the most simple option, or you might make, you might not make a decision at all. And that's not like, that's not really how you want to be in crypto. So, you know, I just like tried to, you know, see the forest for the trees and just like, or I, 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 I don't know if that's that term, but, um, you know, I just try to simplify my decision making and that way I don't feel FOMO. I'm sustainably growing my portfolio. Yeah, I miss out on a bunch of 10 X's, right? I might miss out, I might miss out on like the one 10 X per day, but I also don't FOMO into like the 25 other, uh, like, you know, minus 50% that just like, this, that just get dumped on and whatnot. So wrapping it all together, uh, I just want to give an example of, uh, like get the farms acronym and applying it to the one farm that I think is a really good one, right? And I still argue that DeFi Kingdoms is a really good farm, um, and it's still it's still my highest conviction farm. And uh, I want to go over like how uh, I, I guess my journey of understanding DeFi Kingdoms, why I built conviction in it, and uh, and all, all that all that, right? So yeah, so let's talk about DeFi Kingdoms using the farms acronym. So the fundamentals. So. Fundamentals, right? I mean, DeFi Kingdoms it consists of roughly 50% of the TVL on Harmony. It's gonna, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna stay that way. TVL growth is strong. NFTs are selling for six to seven figures. Uh, growth in community is great to see. I think their Discord has like 27,000 members or whatnot, right? And th the narrative for play to earn games is strong, right? I mean, we have like SoftBank buying like all these metaverse coins. These metaverse coins are like pumping, right? It's just a good narrative and it's got the fundamentals too because there's user growth, there's TVL growth, there's everything, right? And they're trying to be a multi chain. Uh, DeFi uh, play to earn game. So, uh, analyzing tokenomics, right? This is what you, this is what you have to do. So, DeFi Kingdoms has a really interesting mechanism for, I guess, farming, right? So, these APRs that you see at the seed box in the farm is very, very high. However, there's a locking mechanism, and there's a little bit of game theory where you know early farmers um, were like the early farmers like were less incentivized to claim early, and were because the longer we wait to claim and sell. We, the more tokens we get to unlock, right? And the early farmers are more likely to be uh, like farmers with more conviction, right? Like if you're in DeFi Kingdoms, like back in September, you're more likely to have higher conviction. And you know, those people with like the, the with more tokens are going to be more incentivized to just like hold off on claiming tokens, hold off on selling them tokens. And it's been it's been a positive price action for the price of jewel. It's created excitement, and it's you know these NFTs are going for insane uh, <laughs> insane figures, right? And also, the question you should always ask yourself is like, what is the utility of this token? Why, why would anyone want to buy this token that I'm farming? Well, Jewel has in-game utility and natural demand as people buy Jewel to summon and buy heroes, play the game, right? It's the in-game currency. It's the Jewel is the currency that fuels the in-game economy. So, you know, yes, it's a farm token. It's, in, in, it's inflationary, right? So like, you know, for the price to go up, there has to be more buy pressure than the sell pressure uh, on, on any given day. But you, you can kind of imagine, like, okay, like, Maybe this thing can go up, right? Maybe this thing can go up. So let's talk about risk. And uh, this, um, obviously, like uh, risk is uh, it's a factor, right? DeFi Kingdoms is way less risky now than it was two months ago. But uh, you know, it's 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 kind of something that I have to go over. So this is part of my private Discord. I, I talked about DeFi Kingdoms back in September fourteenth, and you see that you know the TVL on DFK was twenty million dollars, right? And back then, Jewel was a shitcoin. I mean, like there's there's no way to put it right. I mean, there was there wasn't really that many fundamentals. I mean, the application was really cool, but you know there was like no excitement for it. There was like like no one was buying these NFTs, and Jewel was just a, a, a hope and a, it, it was it was just a pipe dream, right? So. In mid-September, I made a speculative bet on DeFi Kingdoms. I bet like, you know, like roughly 2% of the portfolio, right? Plus or minus 1%. And yes, in hindsight, I, 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 I wish I bet more. However, I knew that it was a high-risk play. It was a speculative play. And I'm okay with the fact that, you know, this could go to zero, but I'm going to bet 2% because I see a lot of potential. And then a few weeks later, there was a Gen Zero NFT sale and 2,000 heroes sold out in 10 minutes. Literally sold out in 10 minutes. And I'm like, oh my God, there's so many eyeballs on this project. 
there's so much excitement in the community. People want to hold these, hold these NFTs. So the day after those Gen Zero heroes sold in 10 minutes, I tripled down on that investment, right? So it kind of goes over like, hey, I made a speculative play, a tiny portfolio bet early on. And then as my conviction grew, I tripled down, right? And there's nothing wrong with doing that, right? I mean, sure, it doesn't feel great. I wish I bet more early, but you know, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the game you're playing. Do I wish I yellowed my net worth into it? In September, of course, right? But you know, I risked very little capital and then added more as my conviction grew. And I still have a sizable bag that I'm happy with. And I feel like this is the mental model that people should have when it comes to taking risk. You don't have to bet big early on. Sure, like, you know, if you if you have hopes of like turning ten dollars into a million dollars, you know, you have to like take on crazy amounts of risk. But you know, I'm not in that game to like, you know, hundred X my portfolio. I'm in the game to manage risk and sustainably sustainably grow my portfolio over time. And lastly, or oh, sorry, uh, not lastly, but second to last, uh, never married a farm, right? Never, never married, married a farm. And yes, Jewel, I love the token, but you know, I do have profit taking strategies in place and you know, this kind of adjusts over time, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to just like hold this thing for the next 10 years, right? I'm going to have ways to like take profits. And that's, and that's one of the reasons why like, like you should expect Jewel price to go down at some point because there's a lot of people that's been farming Jewel and it's fair for them to take profits. They should take profits, right? Uh, so you know, be humble, take profits, and never get too greedy. Greed is the thing that kills you in crypto because in crypto, as the price goes up, people become more bullish. As the price goes down, people become more bearish. And that's normal, right? That's It's a psychology, but it's, it's really dangerous to play that game because, I mean, like, are, are you going to be buying more tokens on the way up and then selling on the way down because like, that's how like psychology works? No, you just have to act rationally. If not, then you're just going to get wrecked, right? And lastly, simplification. And yes, metaverse tokens are hot, but the way I think about it is Jewel is my exposure to GameFi and the Harmony ecosystem, right? I don't, like, I, I think about my portfolio holistically. And if I just, if I just simplify that, hey, like, yes, metaverse tokens are hot. Yes, you know, there's this new game. If I buy that token, it might be a 5X, whatever, right? But you know what? I, I'm not going to overcomplicate things, right? Jewel, I believe, will capture the majority of the trend, right? Or if, if metaverse tokens become hot for the next five months, I'm sure Jewel will capture, you know, that trend. Excuse me. And also, I, I understand that as the number one decentralized exchange on the Harmony ecosystem, um, you know, if Harmony does well, Jewel will probably do well. So, you know, my, my I, I guess my Jewel position is big enough where that I, I don't really like, need to buy more GameFi tokens. I don't really need to buy more one because Jewel does it for me. And that way I get to free up the rest of my portfolio to allocate into other plays, right? Sure, like if GameFi blows up, like I like yes, like I wish I YOLO net worth in the game game five tokens or like metaverse tokens. But you know, I'm not in the game to, you know, like try to like run up my portfolio at 3x in like two weeks. You know, I'm just like trying to be humble, managing risk and growing my portfolio that way. Right. And that way I'm simplifying my decision process, right? I don't have to think about other things in harmony, right? I mean, I still monitor things, right? I still look for new opportunities and I'm looking for new opportunities like in play to earn uh, PD, PD games and whatnot. But I'm not like, you know, like spending every single day of my waking hour looking into these things because, you know, Jewel is my exposure. And lastly, uh, just wrapping it up with the conclusion, you know, farming is hard, right? I mean, I, I got wrecked as a farmer early on because I didn't know what I was doing, but over time I learned my lessons and it got me to where I am today. But if you think through everything rationally, you can easily have success as a farmer. Understand the fundamentals, right? And if there is no fundamentals, like know what to do, right? Maybe you should dump that token. If there is fundamentals, maybe it makes sense to accumulate that token. In tokenomics, right? I mean, it's just a mathematical equation. Um, take managing risk, right? It's just like, you know, like managing your emotions. Uh, don't marry the farm, right? Psychology. And then simplification is for you to not feel FOMO and to think about your portfolio holistically. And all it takes is hard work, rational thinking, and a little bit of luck, right? I mean, everyone, like, I mean, hard work. I mean, yeah, I mean, everyone gets lucky, but, you know, hard work leads to luck, right? Hard work leads to success. Everyone needs to get lucky, but, you know, I mean, you can argue that. Like anyone, you, you can call anyone lucky, but you know, if they got lucky, they probably worked hard to get there. So, you know, that's kind of the end, the end of the video. Um, I, I, I do want to touch on this point that, you know, my channel, like I don't run ads, right? Uh, I, I don't like do paid shows. I, I even gave away the, the, the Gen Zero and NFT, which is probably worth like, uh, de depending on when you're watching, it might be worth like six figures. Um, so uh, the, the way I, uh, I, 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 I guess I don't run ads, but I, I do have a paid group, right? In the Discord. Uh, and so link will be in the description below. Check it out if you're interested. We do have a pretty vibrant community down there. And, you know, we, we call ourselves the Humble Farmer Army because, you know, we don't really go for the moonshots. We just, you know, just simply try to grow our portfolio. So 
uh, you know, check out check out the link in the description if you're interested. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. Have fun farming out there, and happy Thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, have fun farming out there.